It's the Philippines, a dangerous country. Good, good morning, morning, good, good evening, evening, and good afternoon, afternoon, guys. Welcome to a special episode on the Philippines and safety. Trina, before we booked our flight, I think, if I'm correct, you had some safety concern. Yes, no? Yeah, I mean, the reason that I had safety concerns was because of what I read in the mass media. There's some violence in some regions in the Philippines. I firsthand didn't know what was going on, so I did a little bit of research. I went on the state government site of the U.S. and there it says be very careful in particular regions. There's these red zones to avoid. So yeah, I was kind of concerned. But then I talked to Pierre and he said that, you know what, so long as we avoid the red zones, everything should be okay. Yeah, that's what they said on the French government side. Mm -hmm. But still, it raised a bit our alertness level. Yeah. And also, there was another concern, I think, for you, which was more linked to Just traveling life in there, general. Right? Uh, well, not necessarily life, but just traveling around. So I am not very used to traveling on ferries. And obviously, the Philippines is made up of 7,000 plus islands. So one of the best ways to get around is ferry. I was just concerned about the safety of traveling locally. You hear a lot of stories, oh, that ferry crashed and so many people die and stuff. And I was on a speedboat that sunk in Indonesia. So we didn't want to have a repeat of that. Trina was slightly concerned. But he's he's wonderful. He's like, you know what? We can go ahead and travel by boat. It's gonna be amazing. And then he tells me a story about how his ferry sunk in Indonesia. I'm thinking to myself, how is that helpful? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not very helpful. I agree. But it is actually very helpful to give you like guidelines on how to act yeah. in a situation like that, which I think is always important to keep in mind. But with that being said, there will be two aspects we're going to talk about. First, general safety, how we felt, walking around, blah, blah, blah. And the other one is going to be more environmental safety and also transportation. So number one, how did you feel, Trina, when you arrived in the Philippines and how did you felt walking around? Sure. Um, so the first thing that I felt in the Philippines right off the bat when we landed in the airport was a sense of relief. At that time I was feeling really, really homesick and I, yeah, I was just kind of in a, in a particular mood that happens when you travel a lot. The warmth of the people from the first moment that we landed is incredible. So yeah. everyone's super friendly, everyone's super helpful. They're trying to just make this the best experience that you can have. And that gave me a sense of comfort. Not to say that you should throw out all your safety concerns, but that just really made you feel more comfortable knowing that you can approach people, that they would be able to help you uh, whenever you needed it. And they would be happy to. That's, yeah, that's a big difference as well. Um, in the city, so the biggest city that we went to was Cebu. My, I guess the, the, the major concern that I had, or the biggest concern that I had, was around just the sheer volume of people around me, motorcycles, cars. That's something that I'm not necessarily used to, especially in the States where you're walking on sidewalks. Here, you're walking on the streets sometimes too. Yeah. Um, so you just have to use common sense and be alert when you're walking around. Don't get run over, obviously. Very important, guys. <laughs> Don't get run over. On that note, our friend Juju, that you guys might know, uh, was in Manila and he had the exact same concerns. So whether you're in a big city on Cebu or you're in Manila, kind of the same concern. So another thing that I noticed about Cebu and the big cities is that there's an equal amount of men and women. So I think even if I were traveling alone, I would feel 100% safe in the Philippines just because it's a it's, it's a very normal it's thing. mixed. Yes. It's mixed. It's not like 90% men on the street no, or in the evening in the streets. It's actually total pure mix of people. Uh, regarding walking around, always use your common sense if you go there. It applies to any country in the world, mm -hmm. even Japan, although they're gonna run after you and give you back your money you lost. In most cases, you have to remember Please don't showcase your last latest iPhone you have or your latest camera and everything. Just keep in mind that people around you might not have the same means yeah. and you might be tempting them. Some people might have a huge problem at home and just grabbing your phone is going to help them come out of a very difficult situation. So if you really want to help people, give them your phones. Otherwise, just, just be safe with it, you know, don't showcase it everywhere. You really want to help people give them your phones? Yeah, I mean, just buy them, buy everyone phones, you know, give away phones. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what I was trying to say is simply just stay smart with your stuff and, and don't just yeah. showcase them everywhere. Uh, you might not realize the difference of your salary if you're traveling there versus the local salary mm -hmm. is huge. And anything you might have might look like nothing to you, but it's a lot for them, I think. It's, it's a lot for definitely. a lot of people. Remember that. And me, I'm 
I was we were with the vlogging gear and everything so I was always keeping an eye around seeing every everything was okay and to be honest I felt pretty safe I felt even better than in Paris where I feel like everyone's watching yeah. af looking after my gear here I didn't really feel that what I felt was the warmth of the people who wanted to come on camera with us <laughs> People were like so happy to jump in and say hi, which was absolutely awesome. How did you feel about the islands? Because outside the cities. I, I genuinely don't know if I was being naive or not. Like Pierre said, it's not something that you want to like. Here's the thing about us. When we travel, we're not trying to flaunt that we're very different. We have backpacks. Um, we're dressed a certain way. I'm wearing hiking boots. He's wearing like normal shoes. So yeah. we're not extravagant at all. In that case, like, I always try to blend in a little bit, but you're never really going to blend in because you have a backpack and you're... Maybe you look more Filipino than I do. <laughs> actually, yeah. That, so, okay. Actually, I do remember now, because people thought I was Filipino, I kind of liked it because it made me feel more local. And in that case, it made me feel more at ease with the people and it's true. a little bit safer. <laughs> yeah. But on the islands, guys, I mean, on islands, very few people steal because tiny islands and everyone yeah. knows who it is and for the community it's really bad imagine you have a community on an island if people start stealing the, the tourists are gonna go away you know they don't want to go back to an island where it has a negative connotation mm -hmm. so people are super friendly super welcoming to felt totally safe while you're talking about the island safety in terms of money so in the sense where are you gonna get ripped off or not and oh. that's something unique about the Philippines. Maybe it's the places that we went to, but at the times when people were trying to charge us for goods, whether it be food or um, if we wanted to purchase something, it was a very fair price, meaning that they would charge us the same price that they would charge a local Filipino, with the exception of maybe Bohol, just because there's so much international tourism there and there's no yeah. local tourism there at all. But outside of Bohol, everything was fair playing ground. And that's something that I really appreciated while traveling to the Philippines. I didn't feel that anyone was trying to cheat me from, um, cheat me of my money, basically. Yeah, and that makes you feel uh, safer. You understand that you're not being targeted that much. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, I think a very important point is because you have to go to the islands and out and stuff is that you're going to be taking a lot of boats and as we, as we mentioned that was a concern for us you've got different types of boats you've got the big ferry you've got the small ferries you've got the bankal boats uh, which are basically kind of tiny ferries <laughs> whichever ferry or big boat you take yeah, you're going to be pretty much safe uh, they are i think following international standards meaning you have a lot of life jacket life raft everything which is amazing just make sure you see what they are when you get in and how to exit a boat because you never know what can happen and you don't want to be in a situation where you're panicking and you don't know where to go. That's number one. Number two, if you're on a smaller boat, same rule applies. Just check out where your safety gear is, stay in the boat, be happy. And if you're on a tiny boat, I just <laughs> want to say your biggest risk except going for a swim is all your stuff going to get wet. So just remember, bring a big plastic bag and put your stuff in a plastic bag just in case. Something that I didn't take into consideration before is how skilled the seamen are in the Philippines. Meaning that when we went to go purchase our tickets, they would actually tell us, oh, today the waves are very calm, it's a great day to go on the boat. Actually, the days, uh, the, the sea is very choppy today, just be prepared for that. And that allowed me to make a judgment on my own about whether or not I actually wanted to travel that day. So that's something that I really appreciated. I think we're going to touch base on weather a little bit later. It does seem like people in the Philippines are very cautious in terms of making the voyage out when there are storms because we had a lot of, let's say, ferries and transport that was canceled during the storms. Yeah, yeah, because so on the weather overall, remember there are like 24 plus <laughs> typhoons per year in the Philippines. So that's something you have to remember you might be stuck in a place for a few days just because they're going to shut down the ferries while the typhoon goes and that's something you have to remember and plan in your travel just keep a few days of you know of, of lag between flights just in case you never know what happens we got stuck for like five days in a row for example in Estancia and that was amazing typhoon if they happen ask the locals what to do they know better and if you see in an international news that it's going to be a huge storm Try to leave the area because that's, mm -hmm. that's not a good idea. Same, don't stay uh, next to lands who, where you, can, you know there might be landslides. We had 
when we were there people got killed uh, with landslide during some typhoon so just always keep that in mind guys and, and just be a little bit smart about it yeah. read up and maybe document yourself on the, uh, how to act in the typhoon or where to go where to shelter you never know what happens it's always be better to be prepared other than that what you see in the international press territory problems the drug problems and all that we did not no. feel that anywhere we went in Mindanao on the, uh, on the north the part, part and most people we met there were like oh, okay the south is more dangerous that's where they have a lot of problems that's what you see on TV and so where we were that was perfectly fine yeah, we, we mainly spent our time in the Visayas and then yeah. in northern, Shogau, yeah. yeah. So Shogau, northern not Mindanao. a problem in terms of any kind of internal conflict. I didn't even witness, no, not, nothing really. I can't, I can't speak up for that. Yeah, I think overall, highly, 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 highly recommend you guys yeah. going to the Philippines. You shouldn't be more concerned than safety than anywhere else because, I mean, right now we're in countries like Thailand and honestly, just from my input, I, I don't know why people would think the Philippines is more dangerous than Thailand because it's, yeah. it's definitely and Thai not. And people are afraid to go to the Philippines. Okay, <laughs> I mean, why not? With that being said, it's more fun in the Philippines. So just go over and discover this amazing country that's still a little bit undiscovered, I feel. Yeah. And if you're watching this and you still have some questions about safety in the Philippines, don't hesitate to ask us in the comments. We'd be happy to give you our first-hand experience and our advice. And remember, this channel is 12 countries, 12 months, uh, if we make it. Make sure to subscribe, uh, leave a big thumbs up for that video, leave us a comment if you want to say anything. <laughs> I hurt my hand. Make the most of your time on this planet, you never know when it ends. See you in the next episode, bye! Bye! This is what we got from the Philippines. We'll be in your mind for the rest.